most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Directors, Father, as we study today, may the Spirit of God have right of way in my heart and help me, O God, to teach thy word, rightly divide thy word. God forbid that I say one word that ought not be said. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been studying the marriage of the Lamb for several broadcasts. Now, today I'm going to answer the question... Why am I, and of course, great Bible scholars of the past, much, much greater than I will ever be or, or could be? Uh, they, they, some of the greatest men that ever lived and went in the pulpit believe that the church is the bride. Now, why? Why do we believe that? Let me read two verses in Revelation 19, verses 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And then he cries out, Blessed are they that are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, I want you to go with me back in the book of Acts, and I'm going to read some verses that I've read, I guess, a hundred times on the radio in the past 35 years. I suppose I've read them a hundred times, and I make no apology for reading them again. In Acts 15, verse 13, and after this, or after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how that God did at the first visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, After this I will return, build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, I will build again the ruins thereof, I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things, known unto God are all his works, from the beginning of the world. Now, God has a plan, a program, a blueprint, a schedule, and all hell cannot destroy or alter God's program. And according to the prophets, God would visit the Gentiles, take out of the Gentiles a people for his name, and then, after that, return and build the tabernacle of David that has fallen down, and we know it has fallen down, and it will be rebuilt. And then he'll set up the ruins, and the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Now, that is speaking of the millennium. Now, Jesus is, at the present time, waiting for the completion of the bride, the church, and then he will return for his bride. Now, the Holy Spirit has been in the world since Pentecost. He has not departed. And he will not depart until the rapture. Then he'll go with the church. After the rapture, of course, he will return as he did in the Old Testament times. I believe he'll come and go as he did then. But since Pentecost, the Spirit has been here. He has not departed. And he has been calling out a people primarily Gentiles. Now, there are many Jews and others who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Many. I get letters from them. Now, you you may be shocked, but I have, I have on my desk handed to me this very morning as I speak a letter from a Jewish school requesting a full set of Gospel Hour hardback books. Now, that's right. Now, I have that letter. I have it. Uh, a Jewish school requesting a full set of hardback books for the school. Now, let me tell you something. There are born-again people in many places that some of you dear believers 
would not expect to find them, and you say all that crowd is lost, and many times there are some genuine, born-again believers in the crowd that you would consign to the lake of fire, and you'd say that there just couldn't be any saved people there, but remember, judge nothing before the time, and then the righteous judge will judge in righteousness. So, Everyone that you think is going to heaven is not going, and some that you think will not be there will be there. Now, don't you forget that. So, the blueprint, the program, the schedule of Almighty God is to take out a Gentile bride for his son and then return and build the tabernacle of David, which is now in ruins, and set it up that the residue of men might seek after God. Now remember, during the tribulation period, there will be a great number saved out of every tribe, tongue, kindred, nation on the face of the earth. People who never heard the gospel of the grace of God. If you, I cannot emphasize this too strongly. If you are listening to the gospel hour and you reject the word of God and the salvation of God's grace, you will not be saved after the rapture. Those who never heard the true gospel will hear the preaching of the 144,000 and many of them, yes, a multitude that no man can number will be saved. Now, let me refer you, please, to Ephesians 5. And I'm answering the question. I've been speaking on the marriage supper of the Lamb for many days. And I'm answering the question, why am I so sure that the church is the bride. Now, in, in Ephesians 5 and verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another, in the fear of God, wives, submit yourselves on your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Now, you see, the church and Jesus is compared to the wife and her husband. Now, you dear ladies know, if you know anything at all about Christianity, you know that the man is the head of the woman. And you know that God Almighty declared that Eve was the weaker vessel. Now, there's no point in arguing about that. Because the only thing I have to go on is the Word of God. And that's what I'm going to believe and that's what I'm going to preach. God created Adam and then God removed a rib from his side and he created Eve. And he gave her to Adam, and he said, this is your helpmate. And Adam said, she is bone of my bone. And woman was taken out of man. Now, when Jesus left the Father's bosom, he came to this earth, and he took a body, a body of humiliation. And in that body, he paid the sin debt. He died, he was buried, he rose again, and it was fully paid. That is, the sin debt was fully paid. And he made possible salvation for any and for all who will come to God in his name through his blood. Now then, let's go on. I want to show you something very precious. So, he said, wives, submit yourselves, your own husbands, as unto the Lord. Husband is the head of the wife, as the uh, Christ is the head of the church. So he's the head. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, the church. He loved the church. He gave himself for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. Now remember, when the bride comes in the sky, the bride will be clothed in white linen, pure and white. And the linen is the righteousness of the saints. So now listen, listen what Jesus is doing to his church. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, there is a picture of the bride. Now, you watch it very closely. It will be glorious, no spot, no wrinkle or any such thing. It will be holy and without blemish. Not a blemish, not one teeny tiny blemish. A pure, pure church a pure bride clothed in white linen 
The linen is the righteousness of the saints. And the righteousness of the saints is the righteousness of God. Because when one believes on Jesus in true faith and receives him as personal Savior, then God imputes God's righteousness. Now, some of you are not going to believe this. Some of you are not going to accept it. When God saves a sinner, the old nature is not eradicated or killed. You still have a body and a mind, a brain, and you still think as a mortal and earth man. But when you're born again, you possess God Almighty. Now, wait a minute. Don't turn the radio off. Just listen to me. This is one of the true Bible facts that you must accept by faith. You can explain it. No other human can explain it. But when you become a born-again believer, you are a possessor of God. God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, one God, manifest in three persons. You are partaker of divine nature. You are a new creature. You are connected to the head of the bride, the church, and the head is Christ. So, my friend, you possess divine nature. You are united to Christ, and you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. You are God's redeemed child, and you are different from church members who simply sign a card. A dear man came by the other day and he asked me, and he may be listening today, and this is, I'm not criticizing anyone. This, I hope, will be constructive criticism to some. And this dear brother said, I gave a man one of the soul winning books and he read it. And he said he did what you asked him to do. But I see no change in his life. Now here's what I ask people to do. I ask you to Ask the Lord to save you, come into your heart, believe on him, receive him. They're not all. I, at the close of the soul winning books, I plead for the reader to receive Jesus if they're not already saved. Now, let me tell you something. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, and in sincerity of heart, you ask Jesus to save you, forgive your sins, come into your heart, he will, he will. And if he doesn't, it is simply because you did not mean it. You did it in the mind, in the, in the flesh. You did not do it from the heart. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Romans 10.10. 10. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Now, when you believe in your heart to the point that you trust your soul, your spirit, Today, tomorrow, every day you live, and the day you face God, you trust Jesus with all. The day you do that, God will save you, and there will be a change in your life. Now, it's possible to have mental belief. It's possible to believe mentally, but God doesn't deal with the brain as having to do with redemption. He deals with the heart. It is in the heart that man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth we confess that we're saved. Now, if you're born again, there will be a change in your life. Now, I'm not talking about that you'll jump up and down and shout and scream and run and clap your hands. Uh, you may do that. You may do that. And I'm not going to criticize you if you do. But the thing I'm talking about is you'll have a different desire, a different love, a different outlook on life. You'll become a member of the body of Christ, a member of the New Testament church, and Jesus is the head of that church, and he will sanctify it. He'll wash it with the word. He will make it a glorious church. It will not have a spot or a wrinkle or a blemish. Now listen, verse 28. So ought men to love their own wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord, the church. Now listen. 
for we are members of his body. Eve was a part of Adam's body. God removed a rib. Now Jesus gave his blood. And the life of the flesh is in the blood. So Jesus gave his life. And we receive the blood by faith. We receive the blood by faith. And the blood cleanseth us. The blood redeems us. The blood borns us. The blood puts within us life. The life of the Spirit is in the blood of Jesus. Now watch this. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his mother, father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they twain, or two rather, shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. Now watch it. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. I'm talking about Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, the church is the bride of the Son of God, the Lamb. We are members of his body. That is, we are members of the family of God. We are members of the spiritual family because Jesus gave his blood. He gave his blood for the remission of sin. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You cannot be redeemed with corruptible things. You are redeemed with the precious blood. The church is the Gentile bride made up of Jews, Gentiles, black, white, red, yellow, rich, poor, bond, free, regardless, educated, uneducated, whosoever will, whosoever will, let him drink of the water of life. And if you are a believer, you are a member of the New Testament church, a member of the body of Christ. You are a part of the bride and you will be present at the marriage supper in the sky. Father, take the word of God today and bear it home to every heart that has listened. Save souls. Save every precious soul that's under conviction. May each one believe on thee, dear Jesus, and receive thee as Savior for your precious name's sake. Amen.